I, I've got a lovely um, thing of actually introducing Carly today. Carly, um, wants to, you remember Carly got baptised, you're going to say this, I know, but Carly got baptised a while, um, was it on Easter Day or Christmas? I can't remember now. Was it Easter? Easter Day, and she has an, had a, gave a little bit of her testimony there. She's got an amazing testimony of how God has transformed her. So I'm going to invite her up, and the reason is, uh, you're going to say that, it's got a particular birthday, haven't you, that's very special. But anyway, come up here. I'm going to pray for you, and then I'm going to leave you to it, okay? So don't mess it up, Carly. I'm joking. <laughs> no pressure. But I think it's always good to hear people's stories of how God has transformed them and changed them and um, made them different. And Carly is an absolute dream. We love her. So let's just pray for you, Carly. Lord, we thank you for our sister Carly here. We thank you for all that you've done and that she is victorious in her life. Lord, thank you that her witness today... Um, many will hear it, Lord, we pray. And Lord Jesus, be transformed by her witness and realize that Jesus is alive and he's really doing the work. So Lord, we pray now, blessing on Carly. Amen. Okay. Hello. Good morning, my beautiful family. I've been to an open mic night with her, so she makes me nervous. <laughs> Some of you already know my story, which started nearly 40 years, uh, over nearly 40 years ago. I was born to parents who didn't know God, but, but they knew a life of fear, trauma, and, and a lot of loss. But all was not lost. I had a protecting factor in my life. Angels who come to know God through all of this difficult situation, and my auntie and uncle who are sitting here with me today. Amen. As I grew, unfortunately, I grew away from God and grew into the more difficult emotions I had experienced early in my life. They started to shape me in my own adulthood and motherhood. I simply couldn't manage my emotions. The, the enemy had got hold of me and my life spiraled out of control. I entered into my own life of violence, and loss, trauma, addiction, and the enemy had arrived. I was consumed. God never gave up on me though. As I, as I had given up on myself. He sent me a gift. He sent me Jamie. He sent Jamie into my life. Hallelujah. Jamie began to show me what real love was, what a life without these negative emotions should look like. He showed me patience, peace and tranquility, but I was too damaged. The damage was done. I was broken and I could never be fixed. Defeated and downtrodden and confused, Jamie never gave up. By the grace of God, as I began to spend more time around Jamie's home, God sent me another gift. He's, he never gave up. Lily came into my life. Unfortunately, the damage was already at this point done to my children. They had themselves experienced adverse childhood experiences because of me. They were eventually removed from me. Oh, here I was again, grief, loss, resentment, emotions that I was familiar with. This time I had an antidote for them. This time I had something that could take away the pain. I found cocaine. I couldn't cope. I couldn't cope any longer with it. I, I, I knew I wasn't doing the right thing, but I, I, I didn't know what to do. Everything was gone. God sent me another gift. My friend Carol, she picked me up and she took me to rehab. Was I saved? Oh, God is so, so good. Who knew? Who knew whether I was saved or not? Looking back now, I can say wholeheartedly, thank God for those people that safeguarded my children. I lift up the local authority, the judge, and those professionals and carers who at one time I thought was just trying to stitch me up. On my return from rehab, Lily appeared again like an angel a true angel she's a true gift from god she brought me into st james's i met our lovely laura who was so compassionate and understanding she empathized she understood she showed me what mercy could actually do i had a safe space to be honest i didn't have to hide who i was or what i was or what i was doing i was loved regardless wow they say, they both say it's God. I just think they're fabulous. <laughs> I, I was delivered. 
The more faith I had, the more fellowship I took up with God, the more love I got from the St. James's family. The more I learned not to ask God to get me out of situations, but to be in the situations with me. He'd always been in them situations with me. I'm living proof and, I'm, and the beautiful people I have in my life is living proof that God is so, so good. He never gives up. You can have an ounce of faith and he will never, ever give up on you. Amen. Thank you, Carly. And uh, don't, it's nerve wracking doing that, isn't it? You did an amazing job there, you know, and uh, to share your story. But uh, do talk to Carly about a story. And it's been wonderful to watch how she's grown and changed and what God has done with her. The transforming God that we have, don't we? I'm going to invite um, Luke to come and do our reading now. And then um, I will preach. Our reading is taken from Matthew chapter 25, starting at verse 31. Uh, if you want to follow along in the Pew Bibles, that's page 995. Uh, it's titled, Sheep and the Goats. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in? or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They, will also, uh, they also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or needing clothes, or sick in a prison? and did not help you. He will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. And they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, speak to our hearts today that we may hear from you. Amen. I meant to say we're going to do communion later and just to be, um, so I'm, I'm warning those on Zoom as well that if anyone's on Zoom and wants to go and get their bread and a bit of wine and uh, we'll do that with this fine. Um, and it will be dip in, okay? So rem I'm reminding you because I know a few of you accidentally ate before you dipped. Um, <laughs> if you do that, just ask me for another wafer, it's absolutely fine. So I will um, give you uh, the wafer and then you will dip. And there will also be opportunity to be prayed for and anointed as well over here. So please do get prayed for and anointed. So just to let you know that we're doing communion today, really. 
Um, but today is actually Christ the King Day. Um, it's the um, Sunday before Advent, um, and it's called Christ the King Day. Great thing to do, isn't it? Wasn't it a great scripture as well after that wonderful testimony from Carly? I thought, what a perfect scripture after a perfect story of redemption of how God has lifted and loved um, Carly. And Carly, by the way, is such a blessing to us as well. She talks about us a lot, but actually she is such a blessing to us. And I just know that God is going to use her for his glory in ways that we've not even seen yet. Um, but as others see how we love each other, this is all about that, really. They see Jesus. And they will want to belong to the kingdom of God. I think that... Um, we see that very much in gyms. You know, gyms on a Wednesday where we have uh, anyone come in. Anyone come in any time in this church, to be honest. Everyone is welcome. People are helped wherever they are. And we see the love of God being extended to our community. We see changed lives in practical ways. And Sonia and her team uh, take time, mostly, you know, to listen. They're an incredible team of people with incredible gifts. To listen and to respond to the needs in the way that Jesus did. That's what they do a lot of the time, isn't it? It's just listening to people and listening to their stories that they're heard. And I don't know about you, but sometimes being heard is actually the greatest gift that you can give anyone. I know for me, if someone's actually listened to me, I don't want solutions. I just want someone to care. Isn't it true? We just want a lot of people out there just want someone to care, not judge, but show grace and mercy and just love. So the stuff that happens on uh, says gyms is um, pretty incredible. But we have a king. And I'm not just talking about King Charles now. I have to be careful here, don't I? We have a king, though. We have an eternal king. We have King Jesus. A king is a ruler, of course, with authority. Um, authority to change things um, with subjects. That is, of course, people who they care for. And we have King Jesus, who is the ultimate king. The ultimate king, okay? He would die for his people. In fact, he did die for his people. And that's the point, isn't it? The person you like least, by the way, I hate to tell you, but the person that you like least in the kingdom is loved equally by God and by Jesus, our king. All right? All of us are loved by Jesus equally. God has no favorites. I know Paul, Paul constantly says, I'm in favor, but he's not. Isn't he? God actually has no favorites. We, every single one of us matters. Every one of you matters. How we treat each other matters. How we love each other matters. Do you treat each other the way that Jesus treats you, I wonder? Because that's what that scripture says, isn't it? The way you treat others is actually should be the way that Jesus treats you. That's a pretty cool order. But if we're honest, I suspect most of us fall pretty short at times. Praise God for grace. All fall short, but our God loves us anyway. God loves me anyway, even though I fall short all the time. He loves me. When we greet our neighbor, when we feed them, when we get involved within, with justice and the gym's work, when we care for others, when we clothe them, when we take time with them, Jesus the King knows it, and it makes an incredible difference. I wonder how many of us sit here because somebody just cared enough to do one or two things that made a difference in our life. Those moments, I can remember certain people in my life that changed my life just by say, listening or spending time or doing one thing, and they probably may never know that even. But we can make a difference in that way, and we should be. When we love our enemy and forgive each other, we are being like Christ. We are called to show the good news of Jesus in how we act as well as how we speak. Okay, so it's okay saying it all, but if you're not doing it and it's not coming out in your actions, it's pointless. We are called to walk the talk. Walk the talk. Showing grace to those who, who we find difficult. Be in light when there is darkness all around. Our words, in other words, should match our life, and our life should match our words. It's a big call. Now, in the previous scriptures before this one in Matthew, those with faith are reminded to be prepared. And Advent, of course, is all about being prepared, actually, when we come into the Advent time. 
uh, time next week. Um, the day is unknown when Jesus will return. And at the be if you go and look at those scriptures, go and look at them later, you know, not now. Um, they have the ten virgins were, being, were, be, um, were to be prepared with their lamps, ready, waiting for their king, alert and awake. Are you awake, alert and prepared to meet Jesus, your king? Are you awake? Are we awake here in the church today, in St. James, in Holy Trinity, in the church in Barnet, in this nation? Are we awake? Are the Christians awake? Are we alert? You know, you can't be a part-time Christian. You're either all in for Jesus or you're not. You're either with him or you're not. There's no two ways. Jesus doesn't give us that option. You're either his disciple going with him or against him. And part of being ready, though, is also caring for others. What are your compassion levels, your empathy? How do you love others? The time of Advent, I say, is a time of preparation. When we will start to think about being ready to meet Jesus in our life at a deeper level. So I'm hoping we're preparing to think about that as we get up to Christmas, as we lead up to Christmas. And of course, then we are reminded that Jesus came as God in the flesh because we matter that much. God came here for us. You matter that much. And when it talks in that scripture about those gathered, mentioned in the scripture, it actually means anyone actually anyone and we are to care, care not just for those who are part of our church part of our little circle part of the people i like like i said we are to care for those outside the kingdom we are to show jesus through our action our words we are not to judge those who are in and those who are out we are to treat all well not just our own it's then that they see Jesus. It's then that we have wonderful stories and testimonies, like Carly said, because a few people cared enough to show love to someone who maybe others struggle to see good in. Not that you, I don't mean you. <laughs> Proverbs 19.17 says, He who is kind to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will reward him for what he has done. You know, it's really important that we're involved with poor. It's really important that we're involved with injustice. And by the way, you never know when you might be somebody who's on the other side of that. When do we need that care? God tells us to be concerned for the poor, even in the Old Testament. And now, of course, here in Matthew, that scripture read, connects us with the King of Kings. We serve Jesus when we serve others. We are called to be good stewards not only of our money, but also about how we enable injustice, how we look after this earth, how we care for everything around us, for our community like King Jesus. How can we be a church that reaches out to those on the margins, that makes a difference to lives through practice and presence? How can we do that? How can we continue to do that? How can we keep you know, it, I always say it, gyms is one of the best things we do. We need to make sure that we always keep that as not an option, but essential to what we do because it changes lives when we meet our community and make a difference to them. The groups where people come in and they don't know Jesus, they are essential. They're not optional. They're things that we must do. We need to introduce others to a relationship with God who can really change their lives forever. And we can only do that if we are involved, if we're involved with our communities and the lives around us. The scripture I read is continuing from the theme of judgment, of course, and it makes sense that um, here these scriptures end with the last judgment um, in the context. Go and have a little read of the whole thing. It's quite interesting reading. Here we have Jesus enthroned in glory. And this isn't a vision of the future. This is what is to come. The imagery in Daniel 7 onwards reminds us of how this will look. It says, Thrones were set in place and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow and the hair of his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire. I love these images. They're like, ah, oh, you get this vision, don't you? And its wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire was flowing 
coming out before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousands times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. And then it goes on in Daniel 7 to say, And there before me was one like the Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Asian of days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All people, nations, and men of every language worshipped him. Such powerful, powerful imagery, isn't it? Powerful imagery. Imagine what that's going to be like when Jesus comes back. Are you ready? Are we ready? It's a wonderful, poetic, written description of Jesus in his glory. And here in the New Testament, Jesus is linking it with the scripture, of course, with Daniel. It's an outworking of Jesus, the Son of Man, his kingship and his authority. He's the one who would come. He's the one who brings hope and life and grace. He's the one who brings forgiveness and freedom for eternity. That's our Jesus. That's our King of Kings. The scripture read is a reminder that there will be evidence of our faith, though, in Jesus. And there has to be evidence. What evidence do you show, do I show to others? We who have been forgiven will forgive. We who have received from Jesus will give our time, our love. We'll be generous in spirit and gracious to those around us. Us that have received and been transformed in the count of God. We'll see God in our actions. And the church should be a place where all are welcome. All are welcome. And church, by the way, is us. When two or three are gathered, but all are welcome. God's people develop in relationship with God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and with each other. Church is God's people encountering him every day and being transformed every day to be more like Jesus because he is present in our lives, in our homes, in our gatherings, in who we are, the bride of Christ. You and I, we're the bride of Christ. So the question is, who can you be Jesus to today? And are you a disciple of the king? Am I a disciple of the king? Not just a follower. Someone who does what, what the, the teacher teaches us. Someone who puts it in action. Because if that is the case, it will show. And have you actually received, and I mean in your heart, not just your mind, received the forgiveness and love of Jesus? Have you received that? Do you understand how much God loves you? Have you received that? Do you understand God's grace is bigger than what you can ever imagine? His love and in, is bigger than you can imagine. And God is embracing those around you as well. And even those you don't agree with, God loves, by the way. How we deal with each other in grace and in difference. So important. Why? Because Jesus died for every one of us so that we could know him in our hearts and know his presence and love. Because all fall short of the kingdom of God. And in him, we find our freedom and we find our safe place. God is love. And this isn't a silly romantic love. This is a sort of love that gets on a cross freely and gives up everything just so that we can know him and we can know that death has no power and that our God is exactly who he said he was and he is the judge not you not me it's his place to decide what to do on judgment day we need to stop trying to be God and stop trying to be the savior and just learn to love really love what does that mean what does it mean to really reach out into broken communities because it's messy by the way and people are messy and lives are messy and it's not always going to fit and it's difficult but how will anyone know unless we go how will they know unless we share and unless we say come you're welcome 
There is a God who loves you. Today, the communities we live in need to hear about the real Jesus Christ, the one who came and conquered, the one who brings hope and forgiveness, the one who sets us free, the one who sent his Holy Spirit to move, to change us, to do miracles, to do impossible things, the one who is alive today. This means opening our hearts to be changed, to be people who walk the talk, an even greater level. I say, Lord, forgive me. So many times I fell, but do you know what? It's not about carrying guilt either. It's about carrying Jesus. I am not the saviour he is. Help me, Lord, to lead people to him, not further away from him. Help me to go the extra mile. Help me to be like my king, Jesus. We only do that if we continue to develop our relationship with him first. It's out of that knowledge of who the king is and how much we are loved that we are transformed. So we're going to pray now. Can I get the band up, please? Thanks. If you can stand, stand. If you can't, please don't worry. Jesus doesn't care, neither do I. It's just it helps if we change our stature a bit when we've been sitting for a while. Um, and I just want to pray for us. Just give us a second here to think of those things. Of like, how can we love more? How can we be, you know, and maybe you need to receive the love of God in a way that you haven't before. Maybe you need to receive more of Jesus. Maybe you need to receive more of his presence. Maybe you need to know that you don't have to earn it, that it's grace. And it's that that will transform you. Just spend a moment now and just hand over whatever it is you need to, to Jesus. Whatever things you're holding on to, whatever stuff is in the way. Come Holy Spirit. Come Lord Jesus. Speak to our hearts. Open us up. Transform us. Give us your spirit today, your power in our lives, transforming power. Be our king. Maybe you need to say sorry because you've rejected people or judged people or push them away from Jesus and not even intentionally. Maybe you need to say sorry now. Maybe you need to just let, let go of trying to be the savior even. Just lead people to God. May you be, you need a refreshing of the Holy Spirit and his joy. Have you lost your joy? Joy at serving, joy at caring. Have you lost your compassion? Your desire to open the door, desire to forgive even. Maybe you need to go out and connect with some people in the community in a new way. Whatever God is putting on your heart now, just allow the Holy Spirit to work in you and bless you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all and remain with you always. Amen.